and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Again, we are drinking the Dinu Pass <laughs> Old Ale. All right. Today we're going to bring to you 1982's Next of Kin, which is a request by Alex Caligaropoulos. Directed and co-written by Tony Williams. Jackie Karen is in this, and also John Jarrett is in this too. And he was in Wolf Creek. He's the killer. Next of Kin starts off with our main character here, Linda, going back home. She found out her mother had died and left her... Her estate, which yeah. is basically an old folks home that she ran in the middle of nowhere, out in the country. As she gets there, this other old person's being admitted and you can kind of tell she's like, oh, I don't really want to be doing this with my life. She gets there and wants to kind of reconnect with her past. She goes up to the attic and starts going through her mother's things. And in these diaries, her mother's mentioning that weird things are happening in the house. She's hearing things and something's wrong in this house. And of course, it's an old folks home. People are going to start dying. This old man's ready to get in the tub. There's all this steam, steam and everything. And he goes to put his foot in the tub, and someone's already in there. And but they're yeah. dead. <laughs> like, Ooh. And it looks like he's been dead for, for a, a while. long time. Ooh, like, ugh. Death is starting to strike this old folks home. Linda's kind of rekindled that old love of hers, Barney. Or as they say, Barney. <laughs> He comes over and they're about to go to a nice party and suddenly she just loses the mood. She doesn't yeah. want to go anymore because she finds out that another friend of theirs who's kind of a competitor of hers yeah. <laughs> in regards to Barney's love is driving them there. Yeah, and, and he knows he fucked up too. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He takes off with their friend. She hears water running and goes into the bathroom and water's running everywhere. The steam is building up from all the hot water and got to be someone in here. Nobody. Just water to the brim, <laughs> overflowing everywhere. Barney calls her from some sort of payphone. He did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't go to the party with the other girl. He's like, I'm sorry. And he's sober. Yeah, and I'm sober. I didn't have a lick to drink. <laughs> Linda wants to know more about the house and the history. So she starts to dig into the diaries that her mother left behind. And she learns that her mother's sister was looking after the death records. And she thinks that there's evil in the house and that the house is haunted. There's also deaths happening in the house that are sort of mimicking what Linda's been finding. Linda starts to dig into those records. The cause of death death is different than what her mother said in the diary. Who's been signing off on these records is the town doctor. She goes back to that dead body, that old man that was found in the tub, and she goes to inspect the body, and he looks creepy. I wouldn't want to go close to that body, like, fuck. Now, why is it still there a days later? <laughs> this guy's still laying in the house. Wouldn't it stink? It stink like, and everything? Oh, like, what fuck. the fuck? And she actually does see that there's like fingerprints in the neck. So obviously there's foul play, something's been done to this poor guy. Linda gets all freaked out. She just takes off. She runs away, runs out of the house and runs toward Barney where they're all drinking and he's like, he's all passed <laughs> out drinking beer. She's all irate and he kind of calms her down and they go back to the house. There's a fountain outside. Water that's coming out is clear and it slowly turns to blood blood red. And that girl, Barney's love interest, floating in the fountain with her throat slit. They go into the house and Barney disappears. He comes rushing out in a wheelchair and the wheelchair kind of stops and he goes flying towards her. Dead, <laughs> He's fucking... He's had the biscuit. That's where we're gonna end it because there's a lot more that happens. Biggest thing about Next of Kin is it is really a mystery. Is it a ghostly thing? Is it like supernatural? Or is it foul play? You don't know. Is it a conspiracy against her? You don't know. And why? Watch exactly. the movie to find out. The setting for this movie is fantastic. An old, huge house that's been converted into like an old folks home. Nothing but old, creepy people around you who can't help you. If you need help, they're not going to be any help. <laughs> You're completely useless. Totally useless. <laughs> totally useless. <laughs> and they're out in the middle of nowhere. So it's a great setting for a horror movie. And the atmosphere is great. It's dark, it's rainy. It, it really helps to build the tension in this movie too. Like, man, you can cut the tension with a fucking knife. It's amazing how they do that 
with nothing really going on. They just kind of follow Linda around, slowly going through the house with that music's playing. You're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> right, something's gonna happen yeah. and then it doesn't. A lot of jump scares in this movie, but they're good jump scares. Mm. And so it makes things just like close in. It's like, oh man, it's so good. The imagery of this movie is fucking fantastic. There's some, some of the best shots I've ever seen in horror movies in this movie. Yeah. When they show the dead guy in the tub, when the old guy gets to step in. Uh-huh. Oh, it looks so good. It's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, like you just get, ooh, you get these shivers, like, oh, that guy, how long has he been in that water? And ooh. Yeah, he's all gray, kind of, and white, yeah. and like, oh, fuck. The dreams Linda has, right? It's like, oh, man, like, she got that weird dream. She looks through the window and sees, like, the guy drowning, but he's in the window, drowning, yeah, yeah. like an aquarium. Like Salem's Lot, a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it's kind super of. cool. Oh, yeah. I love the fact, too, that they use such little content to go so far with it yeah. like they stretch yeah yeah it's like know? silly putty silly putty uh, yeah they take this thing and just stretch it out as long as they can like the old man like on top of the dreams and stuff they also have like when he's on that table and he's like staring at them yeah like when he's dead right that's fucking scary it's like and you you think that they're gonna do a jump scare of some kind, but they don't, they don't yeah. go there. Music in this is fucking fantastic. It is some great 80s horror movie music. It's got the heavy synth. Yeah, oh yeah. And, but it's also kind of a little orchestric at the same time, but it it adds to every scene perfectly. It, it, it enhances every scene is what music should do. Exactly. It should enhance it, and this movie does perfectly. Yeah, on very little again, yeah. right? You know? The dialogue all resonates to the characters, and it all stays true. Yeah. Nothing really goes off the rails here, where you you know you kind of lose interest. At it's all story driven. Every piece of dialogue has roots in the story. Yeah. It's not like just like bullshit or some subplot that goes nowhere. No, it, it means something, right? And it moves the story forward. The comedy in this movie is great. It's sporadic. Like it's very it's peppered in there a little bit, but when it's there, it's there for a reason at a good spot where right. it kind of breaks up the horror a little bit but not too much where it gets stupid like the old woman where she gets that walkman for a present she's like yeah. what is this 20 minutes later she's got the earphones on they're going to the bus to go on like a yeah. field trip or whatever <laughs> yeah. the guy's talking to her i, I can't hear you it's like so subtle yeah, it's subtle but it's it works and it breaks up the <laughs> horror just perfectly these are old people, old people right because yeah, yeah. old people can also be a little funny <laughs> One old man that's kind of reliving his past in the war and stuff like that. He's always talking and talking <laughs> yeah. and there's... Nobody gives yeah. a shit, old man. He starts in the outside. <laughs> Later on, you're like going up the stairs, he's still talking yeah. and talking <laughs> about the barracks. The shining star of the movie is is the final act. It's so good. Doesn't disappoint. No, man. it goes from little haunted house kind of thing to like woo yeah. it just like goes and it's, up like this it stays there it too stays like, there. amazing tense scene where she's waiting linda's waiting she knows something's gonna happen doesn't know what it is yeah but she knows something's gonna happen she's biding the time by building a little pyramid out of little sugar blocks she gets to that top little glass thing <laughs> and oh i'm not gonna wreck it for you but it's fantastic. Yeah. And I love that they don't destroy anything like that with useless dialogue yeah. and bunch of shit, right? Yeah. They stay on point. It's paced slow, but it goes by quick, which is hard to describe. Hard to, I can't describe it, but it, go, like, it felt like 45 minutes. Yeah, it's just the way that the movie plays out. Because <laughs> you're always intrigued by the next scene. You always yeah. want to see what's gonna happen next, yeah. right? And then it's it's great, they, they set it up perfectly. Next of Kin is really like a solid master craft of horror and mystery. And it's Australian yeah. too, right? You won't be disappointed. Great imagery, great soundtrack. There's nothing we can really knock this movie for at all. Perfect horror movie. So until next time, keep drinking. Australian style. <laughs> yeah.